Hello boys and girls, another new year has come. Not long ago, I just marked my year 12 physics IA and I'm sure the year 11 will start soon. To avoid they make the same mistake again, I'm going to show you uh, what I find quite often happen, uh, happen in the past year and I hope they can stop making this mistake again so that my face would not look like this again. Before we start, I will assume you have some basic background knowledge about the physics I expectation. Uh, if not, you should look at the criteria again. Uh, the other thing that I would like to say is um, watching this video doesn't mean you can get level 6 or 7 directly. It's more about some uh, basic thing that you should look out for. Also, in the coming 12 common mistake, I will always show you the mistake first, what the student wrote. Uh, if you like, you can try to pause the video, think about what actually is wrong from what you, know, you think, and then I can I will then show you the actual explanation. It will be good for your learning. Mistake number one. A student wrote uh, the source of errors in his evaluation is that the wires were not sent well. It's something that very obviously um, simple and also from the IB report as well these kind of um, evaluation source of error will not be counted as a intellectual um, discussion or a valid point and you should always improve those things at the beginning before you do the experiment and therefore what I told him was I would rather you don't put this in your IA Mistake number two, everyone knows that the digital measurement tool, you have to take the last digit. So in this case, uh, if your measure time is 25.60 seconds, probably what you'll be saying is the absolute uncertainty is 0 0.01 second. The problem is the actual uncertainty depends on the context of the situation. For example, for time, quite often, uh, you should take a look of the reaction time as well if you are using a timer like this. The way that you try to include the idea of reaction time in your analysis is you could either test it, simply you can go for online, Google it, uh, reaction time ben benchmark testing, something like that. You can then test your reaction time and of course you should do several trials and uh, take that as a reference. Or number two is you can simply go online and try to search uh, the the regular person reaction time what it is usually for a ordinary person is is about 200 milliseconds and if you try to search for Olympia athletes they would be about average of 150 milliseconds so these are something that you can do to include and obviously you can see that it must be something greater than 0 0.01 second so 0 0.0 second is something that's not reliable and you are more like underestimating your uncertainty in that case. Mistake number three. In the experiment my student used a power supply for apparently powering up the circuit. Uh, and in the analysis he says the resolution of the power supply is 1V because as you could see if you change the voltage it's gonna be 1V, 2V and 3V and so on. And that's the display you can see uh, it's just one, not even 1.0 or 1.00. And therefore, the uncertainty should be plus or minus 1V. Um, the problem of this is obviously is not a reliable design when you try to claim your measurement is 1 plus or minus 1V and the next measurement is 2 plus or minus 1V and 3 plus or minus 1V, etc. Uh, as you can see, the percentage error is extremely high. Um, and therefore, the better approach of doing it is uh, you should actually, even if the power supply show you more digits, you should still always externally measure it with a tool. I'm not just saying that uh, on, this only applies when you use power supply, but in any situation, uh, you should always uh, use an external device uh, to measure it again. So in this case, it could be a voltmeter or multimeter in the scenario. Um, the attitude of doing experiments should always be skeptical and you should always find evidence uh, instead of just simply trusting what is shown from uh, the device itself. Just like when you're buying a USB, 
probably it's not just a USB drive, it's just a USB cable. Similarly, when you use a slot mask, uh, you should not simply claim that it's 100 gram or 100.0 gram because you know from the manufacturing process it it can be directly accurately be 100.0 gram and not to mention you know some of you guys who somehow treats the mass rudely flowing the mass around and it would not be accurately 100.0 gram again you should always externally measure it with a two in this case would be the electronic balance in the scenario and again you should always um, show the evidence of being skeptical and you show you give the marker to see more evidence from your experiment speaking of electronic balance mistake number four let's say if you're trying to measure the mass of the coin which is let's say in your picture you can see it's 5.67 gram and therefore you claim that the absolute uncertainty is 0 0.01 gram the problem with this is there may be some fluctuations in your measurement uh, even if there's no fluctuation you should still uh, specify it and mention it in your IA report and if there is what you can do there are two approach the first approach is you have to take less decimal place so what you can do is imagine if uh, the last digit in your picture let's say this one keep changing right it's like a random number it's always 5.6 something but you can never see uh, what's the digit behind the last digit so what you can do is uh, you may you may do uh, 5.6 or 5.7 gram in that case so which means take less decimal place um, but I will not consider that is the best method in IB the better method I would say is to consider a short period of time uh, reasonably long but not too short let's say 10 seconds you could then observe and mark down the maximum and minimum value of what you're measuring so in this case it will be mass in some other cases it could be something like sound intensity it could be something like voltage after that for that trial of data what you can do is for the average value simply you just take the average which means uh, maximum minus sorry maximum plus minimum divide two and for the absolute uncertainty you minus them and divide two and that's exactly what you learned in IB called the half range method mistake number five you know there is a session that you need to mention about your variables including the control variables and let's say uh, in the experiment of uh, investigating Yan's modulus the student wrote uh, the control variable is the temperature so the problem with this is first of all you you shouldn't be just saying the temperature I think what you can do is temperature of uh, the room or the room air or the temperature of the wire or what exactly you are referring even that you should still continue to explain and provide the relevant source of reference on how exactly the temperature should change the uh, result that you're measuring so for example I can see uh, I just simply search on the Google and find a graph here so I suppose temperature does really have an effect on Jan's modulus but definitely uh, in that case you should give a more concrete idea and uh, more physical um, logical deduction on that to explain why that will be affecting the other thing that you must mention is when you say yeah, when you try to claim that's control variable is how exactly how did you actually control it um, if you try to say you simply control the temperature by air con that will be something quite naive to say because uh, it's simply not reliable uh, the other thing that you should also do is if if let's say temperature is something that you try to control at least you should put a thermometer side by side next to your experiment setup and keep monitoring the temperature um, normally for temperature then we will probably do what above and in the case where you don't find it's too convincing or there's no way that you can control it or rather you drop it rather than bring it up Mistake number six, this is something that may apply to your chemistry or biology as well. Let's say a student said, I use beaker for measuring uh, 300 milliliter of water and the label said the uncertainty is plus or minus 
5%. Um, what you should be doing is beaker, first of all, is not for measuring, uh, measuring cylinder apparently is the one that you should use for measuring. And you can see the 5% uncertainty is so huge, which it would just makes it would just simply make your your report uh very terrible. Second thing is uh ML is simply not the SI unit we use. You should never use it in either any kind of science IA. You should always use CM cube in this case. Number seven. A student wrote in my calculation of GPE equal to MGH, G is taken as 9.81 meter per second square according to the data booklet, and therefore there's no uncertainty. This is surely wrong. First of all, whenever you try to take reference with any value, you should look at the source of reference, and for the gravity, is uh, you have to find you have to understand that it is a value that find experimentally and also it will vary with different locations so in different locations that you try to do in hong kong it will be different in uh, any city in the u.s and also the altitude will matters a lot as well and uh, something you can do is you could go online and try to search uh, with a reliable source uh, the exact location that you do what the g is or you can take a more rough estimation um, with a greater uh, but reasonable uncertainty that you can do so you may ask about so what about the other constant that you may use like plane constant Avogadro constant etc um, recently we have been i mean scientists has been going through a reform of these constant as you can see uh, in the recent news you can try to look at the video from veritasium they talk about how the kg is being redefined as well as the other constant uh, are being fixed so it will be definitely something uh, you would like to see in the past it is something that has uncertainty and now it changes so i'm pretty sure that you should go with the most updated information number seven a student used g equal to 9.81 in his calculation and he claimed that there is no uncertainty because this is from the data booklet instead of finding it out measuring from the experiment the idea is actually wrong first of all the g that you use is actually fine experimentally uh, it was not defined and it also depends on the location and also your altitude so it depends on whether let's say you do it in hong kong in u.s different cities uh, it will be different and also even the same point different altitude would have different G as well so let's say uh, if you try to go online and find out uh, how the number G would uh, somehow you can find out maybe certain website can tell you let's say Hong Kong is 9.80678 for example so what you can actually do is you if, if this is fully trustworthy I don't know how whether or not like they, they can tell you the uncertainty it is but maybe you can take let's say up to this digit and therefore the uncertainty will simply be 0 0.01 in that case uh, will be I, I think it will be a good estimation and in, from that you can calculate the percentage uncertainty um, as in for other constant that you may be curious uh, things like plane constant Avogadro constant uh, this constant is a bit different because they now have changed uh, the definition if you have noticed recently uh, the new reform on the definition of kg uh, let's say if you watch a video from veritasium about that you know that uh, the Planck constant Avogadro constant those things has been redefined and they now do not have any uncertainty because they just simply get defined so if you use the whole number there would not be any uncertainty for that Mistake number eight. I've seen people using a lot of different vernier equipment, and I'll take this as an example. Let's say if you use as a raw meter here, as you can see in the picture, uh, the reading is somewhat zero point negative zero point three nine the unit, and hence the absolute uncertainty that the student claim is zero point zero one uh, the unit meter per second squared. But the problem is this is still wrong. This is still a underestimation. 
very likely, um, like the previous examples, there is a fluctuation in uh, the measurement here. So once again, you need to address where uh, with uh, the same method, same period of time, maximum, minimum, how it will change. The other, other thing that you should always check is the user manual from the supplier. So for example, if it's Vernia, they, they must be, there is a certain manual you can find from the website or even the hard copy when you borrow the equipment. So let's say if you go to the website, you'll find out uh, they have mentioned that the accuracy of this is in fact 0 0.5 meter per second square. So um, as you can see, this is something that you can rely on. And if your absolute or your range uh, due to fluctuation is smaller than that, then I would say, it might be better if you simply take the specification of the uncertainty here. Number nine, about the video analysis. This is something that whenever people use video analysis, they uh, they usually can't really think of the, the way to find out the actual uncertainty. The way that they usually do is simply rely on the program. Remember, don't if you want to be a good physicist, really, you always need to try to justify uh, the uncertainty instead of just trusting whatever program that you use. So, for example, here you can see uh, if you try to claim the uncertainty of the position is 0 0.001 because of the, the number, including actually including the velocity, the distance, I mean the position, the time, uh, is all 0 0.001, then you are actually being naive. The way that actually you need to understand or how to do is you have to understand the way when you do video analysis, there's so much error that will be given to you, I mean to, to your measurement data, uh, including the way that you shoot your video, the angle, uh, the reference line, there must be some uncertainty, uh, the distance from the camera to the actual object that you are taking the video of, um, and also how you click the objects in your video, let's say the uh, basketball here. Uh, one way of uh, justifying the position uncertainty is, let's say if you are doing a basketball, uh, let's say in this projectile motion, uh, then the basketball diameter, you can of course measure it. So let's say it's 24 cm. Uh, of course you can add, you know, what's the uncertainty of this. But mainly what I want to say is, let's say it's 24 cm exactly, then you can try to justify saying that the uncertainty for the position would then be 12 cm because simply uh, you just can't be that wrong. I mean, you from your positions, you will find um, the worst position that you can click is at the rim of the basketball. So for example, like if this is a basketball, uh, of course, normally you click it in the middle, but maybe the worst case is you click it at the side. So this could be a justification for the uncertainty. But of course, you may say, hey, um, then then it would be ridiculously large. And I think that's something you need to think about um, how to further reduce uh, when you have such a situation. But let's say if you use table tennis or some other smaller balls, uh, then the, the this absolute uncertainty will be reduced. Similarly, for the time, I well, I personally didn't try, but I also would doubt whether or not the time time frame shown by the uh, video analysis is also accurate or not. So I always recommend my student to take uh, another trial experiment, a uh, side experiment on just simply pick a stopwatch or something and just take a video of it and you can also see uh, how much uh, deviation it is from from your actual watch to this uh, data log time and from that you can find out uh, the uncertainty of the time in this program so never take it for granted from uh, what is shown in the program okay number 10 this one is probably the most important one and quite a lot of you overlook uh, and don't actually understand when you learn after you learn chapter one so think about that. If there are students saying that according to this graph, we can conclude that X, whatever that is, and Y, X increase proportionally with Y, what is the problem? 
you can try to pause the video and think about why. So first of all, the problem number one is there is no error bar at all, as you can see from the picture. There's no error bar. So in that case, uh, it would never be a valid line of best fit if you never put uh, the error bar there. So let's say if I now got the error bar, then it would be more justified in that case. But the second problem still arises is uh, your description on so-called the proportional. Because things, uh, the idea of proportional is a very broad idea. It could be meaning that it is directly proportional, inversely proportional, and exponentially proportional, etc. Um, I'm sure if you try to search online, if you don't understand, you can try, try to search on Google and you'll find explanation of what these things are. And I'm not going to explain too much here today. Uh, but still, is something that something are still missing in this uh, picture. So I'll, I'll try to further explain to you. But before that, I want to show you one thing first. Many of the people, they uh, mix up the idea of linear and directly proportional. So the idea of linear for mathematics is simply, if you try to use the equation to explain, is y equal mx plus c. And while directly proportional, it would basically mean y proportional to x, and that would deduce you the equation of y equal to mx, or uh, if you like kx is also fine too, given that m or k is just simply a constant. And that would mean, if you try to compare these two equations, uh, well, meaning that the equation in directly proportional one would have the c equal to zero. And that is the y-intercept, if you try to recall from what you learn in maps. And that is to say, if an equation it is directly proportional, it must, it must pass through the origin and that is to say if an equation or a function is directly proportional it must be linear however if it's something is linear it may not it may but it may not be directly proportional so back to our uh, diagram here so let's say if you got those error bar you still in fact cannot conclude anything if you only draw one line of this. Uh, in fact, what you need to deduce whether or, whether or not a pass through origin, it, you need something called the max mean line. You should have learned this in chapter one. So let's say, uh, I'm not going to draw the error bar here, but let's say if the black line here, as you can see, like the one that I, I have in this graph is the original line. And let's say I have the other two line to form the mass mean line, let's say apparently these two are the mass mean line, then you will find out uh, the mass mean line would actually give you an area of how the data could possibly is, let's say in this case. So in that case, you will find out the origin is in fact included in this mass mean line. So in that case, uh, for this one, you can say it's proportional because uh, it, simply, it simply is passing through the uh, origin. However, if in other case, other cases you you are not that not that fortunate, you have the the mass mean line not a able to pass through the origin. So let's say here, uh, I I just barely missing the origin here. So in that case, you can at most say that it's a linear equation. You cannot say that it's a proportional, directly proportional equation. Let's say now you understand the mistake from number 10 and here is number 11. Uh, you may still make this mistake. Uh, so let's take a look. So let's say you try now to claim that since you could draw a straight line from all of these error bar, so you say, oh, the relationship is linear. This is in fact something uh, mentioned in the IB physics report as well the main idea is because simply because uh, from your imagination you can see that you could in fact try to think of different line that could still fit into this error bar because of well but by its nature the, the the natural problem it was originated from cause simply the error bar simply too large as you could see like it, it, it's just simply too large so the thing that you can find is let's say now you could have a positive slope with a straight line. Uh, you could in fact also draw 
I try to draw a a zero gradient, a horizontal line that passes through all the area bar. And you could also find a negative uh, gradient, well maybe not this one, maybe this one, negative gradient of area bar. You could even try to draw uh, some other curves. So for example, you can draw maybe, you can draw a curve like like this. You can even draw a curve like like this, right? So these apparently they come up with different uh, mathematical equation and and that means if you have such an analysis I mean the data uh, then your conclusion cannot be saying that your finding is something that is linear for sure um, not to mention is slope it could be a curve it could be a straight line and that means your conclusion should be saying that you simply don't have any conclusion and that's your conclusion okay the last mistake this is probably something applicable to your biology and chemistry as well and this is also specifically mentioned in the last year physics official uh, exam report as well and what happened is in the evaluation some of the students try to say uh, the measurement tool they used were not precise enough due to the limited resources you have from the school they don't provide you so-called not like very precise equipment and therefore you produce a large random error and the suggestions that they try to claim is to have simply have more money <laughs> to buy more uh, better or precise equipment or you can borrow from the university and in that case you definitely would not get a very good uh, evaluation score here because you should never this is a rule of thumb you should never blame your equipment uh, think about that in the past more than several hundred years ago uh, people like Isaac Newton uh, even Cavendish if you learn about uh, chapter 6 gravity uh, you know the experiment that he did uh, was long ago and he did not use any fancy equipment so he did not use any even digital even not even furniture caliper he used uh, but he was genius enough to think about the procedure how to magnify the results so that he could measure uh, with with uh, much less percentage error. So think about that. For the equipment you use, you cannot. You think about you. You can simply cannot change the 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 reality that they have. They must have certain absolute uncertainty. All right. This would definitely happen. But the thing is, if you think about different design things that you can scale up the things that you try to measure or if you try to use other approach you may probably reduce the percentage error let, let me give you an example in IGCSE uh, there is a very classical experiment typical experiment to say uh, measuring the speed of sound by simply measuring the time it needs to travel from one place to another place so if you think about uh, the, the distance that you try to measure is simply like 10 meter it would definitely be a very terrible idea because the uncertainty in terms of percentage will be very large due to maybe reaction time um, and therefore the way that you do is not saying that oh I use computer well yeah using computer may help but you could also think about maybe scaling up the distance for example maybe scale it up to 200 meter for doing the same test and you can you can then finally get uh, the speed of sound in a kind of acceptable range with certain uncertainty so you are lowering the percentage error in that case successfully here's the end of the video if you have never done this mistake I should say congratulations and I'm sure your teacher will be extremely happy if you still have any other questions about the uncertainty and those things feel free to comment below and I'll see you next time